Hello everyone, my name is Sniping is Fun, and I welcome you all back to the next top 10 list on my channel here on YouTube. And what better than just keep the fighting game train rolling, the ball rolling, keeping forward, another fighting game top 10 list because uh, that's a good, first off that's my channel, Sniping is Fun Fighting Games. Also, I've always done lists that include fighting games and me returning to top 10s after so long. It's the easiest thing for me to get into talking about. I just got off talking about multiverses. We're going to be talking about this. You see the name of the video. You see the thumbnails. The thumbnail when I change it. But this is going to be my top 10 fighting game franchises that need to make a comeback. That need to make a return. And as all fighting game fans out there know, you guys all know, since the inception of fighting games back in the day, through its big 90s boom, 2000s you boom, big in the 2010s. It still is now one of the most popular genres of all time are fighting games. We've seen fighting game franchises come, and we've seen fighting game franchises go. There are certain ones that have stuck around for you know, you know, know throughout time, and there are certain ones that have made comebacks over time, but there's a bunch of other ones. We've seen them come, and then they disappeared. We waited for them to come back, and they never did. <laughs> and this is my top 10 plus honorable mentions of franchises I feel fighting game wise at least you know some realm, realm of fighting game whatever I feel need to make a comeback so without further ado let's get this list going with number 10 and it may not be a specific exactly you know but see that's the thing though this is going to be fighting games as I view them like fighting games in general not just traditional fighters but anything that is under the realm of people beating each other up in some sort of arena in a fighting game style. So you may not agree with that. It may, oh, this isn't a fighting game, this and this, but this is how I view fighting games. Anything that you're, someone's fighting someone is a fighting game. There's a difference between traditional fighting games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, and whatnot, and then other fighting games. And you're going to see a couple of those in here because me as a fighting game fan, I don't judge. I love them all. So... Let's get started with number 10, and it's going to go to Ready to Rumble Boxing, the big Midway franchise. That's the only thing about it is it makes me wonder how Midway franchises are going to come back, given that Midway is gone. But uh, Ready to Rumble Boxing, there was two of them back in the day, PlayStation 1 and 64. I remember playing one of them, and I think I played the other one at a friend's house or rented it, but I used to own, I think, the first one. It's actually a really fun, super cartoony character. They're all super exaggerated and they're all beating each other up and it's a fighting game boxing style thing and i would love to see it brought back because i'd love to see more boxing in general than just them trying to do like fight nights trying to do realistic simulation boxing when you have stuff that could be super arcadian over the years we've had stuff like face breakers and the new adonis creed rocky game that just came out i think like this year i think it was this year you know, trying to be more arcadey boxing games, and then you have something like Punch Out, which is more like a puzzle fighter boxing kind of thing. I want to see more crazy boxing games, and Ready to Rumble Boxing was definitely one of them. And you can get even the celebrity characters in it. They had freaking Michael Jackson and Shaquille O'Neal, and like freaking um, Bill Clinton, I think. Uh, I think it was Bill Clinton or someone like that. They had a bunch of celebrity characters as cameo secret unlockable characters in there. And you have freaking like Afro, Thunder, and all these crazy cool characters. And it'd be cool to see someone bring it back. Now, I don't know where the licensing is going to fall in given that, you know, I doubt WB owns every single thing that was owned by Midway, but they might. But I mean, NBA Jam may have come back. Mortal Kombat's still around. So I think there's a chance that someone owns freaking Ready Rumble Boxing. So that would be cool to see brought back. Number nine is going to go to Flying Dragon. And I'm sure somewhere in watching this video is going to be like, what the hell is Flying Dragon? Good question. Um, uh, it is a franchise that started on the NES. I doubt it was a fighting game back then because I'm not fully sure of it. But I do know it started on the NES and it was only in Japan, I think. And I played the game, I think there's two of them, but I think we only got one of them on the N64. It's made by Natsume. Natsume makes some really damn good games. And it was like a 3D style arena fighter, kind of like a virtual fighter. It was kind of like virtual fighter meets like early stages of Tekken, but they didn't move around like Tekken. But it was kind of like a 3D fighting game featuring very 
anime-esque characters of martial arts backgrounds. There was two different versions in it. I don't know if it was based on any like anime or manga or anything, or if they're all just original characters. I'm not super familiar with it, but I grew up with this game. It was one of the first N64 games I got. I loved it and regret selling it <laughs> because I have not been able to find it again since. Um, but Flying Dragon, for those of you that know what Flying Dragon is, it was a really fun virtual fighter-esque style fighting game with super anime characters beating each other up. There was like one version again that was super chibi model characters. One was more like the adult, older looking character models. So, and they, it, they both shared some elements of the same characters and then they had characters that were exclusive to each version. But it was a really fun game. I loved it a whole hell of a lot. And I would love to see it brought back. I would love to see Natsume do anything nowadays because Natsume was a pretty cool company back in the day. And I don't think they've really done much of anything lately, at least that I know of. And it was definitely a franchise that back then I liked and it had, and I do think some people recognize it because when I posted this list on Facebook and Twitter, I got some comments about Flying Dragon. So other people obviously remember it. So Natsume, make another one, please. It was really fun. And you can definitely make it like modern day technology. It'd be really awesome if done right um number eight is going to go to not an exact fighting game per se but like a fighting game maker if you will fire maker for those of you that don't know what fire maker is there was two of them the first one was released on the playstation one the second one was released on the ps2 it was made by the same people who made rpg maker like on the day back in the day and it's like kind of I think it's made by the same people who did like the Street Fighter X games, like the X fighting layer game now, because it has Skullamania in the game, because they have base characters you can use as a fighting game usually. The first one I know does. I don't recall the second one. And I did own the second one at some point, and I totally forgot how that one played because I couldn't really get into it. It was like my younger self couldn't get into the convoluted nature of actually animating a full-fledged moveset. Like some of these people out there make a full-fledged moveset because that's what you do. You In the second one, you can customize characters and make a full-fledged moveset. And in, in the first one, you took the characters in the model and you gave them your own moveset. It was allowing people, and especially nowadays with how creative gamers are with Minecraft and Mario Maker and RPG Maker stuff on the computer and all these different Game Maker type stuff. This would be cool to be brought back because you'd have crazy movesets of crazy fighting games. It's not a legit actual fighting game per se, but it's a fighting game creator kind of a thing and i would love to see a fire maker 3 and definitely hd super uh, you know modern day version like on like switch and ps5 and all that it'd be really cool and to see how intricate these people these gamers that have so much time on their hands they make super intricate movesets and maybe i can get another chance to actually give it a shot because i never i played only so much of the first one i played a little bit of the second one i couldn't really get into it when i was younger and like middle school and whatnot but now i want to actually try it and i think it would be a good with how much customization has been added to the gaming industry lately, this would be a good one brought back, especially with how the popularity of fighting games. You could definitely do it like that. And also, you can still have Skull of Mania in it. Yes! Now we have number seven. And this is another one just like Flying Dragon that I grew up with on the N64. I never played the first one, but I played the second one of the franchise, Fighter's Destiny. Now... <coughs> There's probably, like, Flying Dragon. A lot of people were like, what the hell is Fighter's Destiny? It pretty much was a Tekken meets Dead or Alive meet Virtual Fighter on the N64 where the all, like, it was like a points-based system. It wasn't like you had, like, best two or three rounds or whatever. It was kind of like karate. It was kind of like, you know, you, you were still fighting, but certain ways of beating opponents gave you a certain amount of points, and you could edit that. You could knock people out by ring out, like in Virtual Fighter or in Tekken. Wait, no, Tekken is an outrage. Well, some arenas technically do. But like the likes of Virtual Fighter and Dead or Alive and whatnot have ring outs. And so Calibur and whatnot too. Like the ring out feature, you can win by doing like a submission hold and making someone tap out. You can knock them out by taking their life out. And you know, so on and so forth. And you can customize points. It was very much like a strategic fighting game where you kind of still play a fighting game in a 3D arena. And you did it based off instead of best two out of three, oh, points. Oh, I can knock them out of the ring. I can make them tap out. I can take their life down the 
little bit and depending on how you beat them because they have certain points like if you knock them out when if you stun them and stuff like that it was a very technical game depending on how much you customize the settings but it was really fun and also it's like a lot of world fighting games all the characters were either stereotypes ripoffs crazy lunatics or whatever there was a freaking fighting cow there was a jester you had the ryu ripoff you have freaking everybody <laughs> it was really cool and we need something like that nowadays with all the crazy characters and stuff like that too i would love to see a fighter's destiny 3 and i'm sure there's someone else out there that does too fighter's destiny was an awesome franchise even though i've only played one of them but i hear more people love the first one than the second one but i never got a chance to play the first one i remember buying a used copy of it back at like disc replay i take it home no disc replay it might have been playing trade i don't know i bought it from a used game store i put it in the thing it took forever to get it to work and when i finally got a match started the arena disappears and my guy falls to his death and i lose i'm like oh i'm just taking this back it's not working <laughs> but fire's destiny for those of you that know you know, and we should have it brought back. Number six is going to go to the first of many Capcom franchises on there. You should have expected this at this point, that there's going to be at least one Capcom game on there. And I'm spoiling for you that there's at least more than one. Um, Power Stone, an arena fighting game franchise that was on the Dreamcast. There was two of them. It was a big arena fighting game. You picked up items. It was all crazy, wacky characters. It was set during, I think, like World War One or World War Two. You had the American character, the Japanese character, the Brazilian character. All different worlds, all different countries had a different fighter. They were all crazy, wacky stereotypes and crazy, wacky, cool characters that had really awesome movesets, and it was a really awesome game. And I cannot believe Capcom has forgotten about it and hasn't done anything with it. And they haven't even put a character in the Marvel vs. Capcom, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, or any other vs. Capcom. It's like they forgot about the game and there's still fans for it and they still want it brought back and while I don't have as much nostalgia for the series as other gamers do, I do believe Power Stone should definitely be brought back. Number five. This is going to be kind of falling in the same camp at least in terms of more of a technical fighter like I mentioned with Fighters Destiny but this is definitely a way more technical fighter and I've mentioned this franchise on my YouTube channel before. I definitely know it was in the Top, it was in the, the five list at some point and that goes to bushido blade um for those of you that don't know what bushido blade is it was made by i believe at least i now know konami owns the license i don't know if konami owned it back then when the games were made but they're made on the ps1 and it was like a fighting game without health bars you win by killing your opponent if you you could win the fight in literally seconds if you slash them in the right point you could hit them in the legs they drop down they have to crawl and then you just start attacking them and while they're on the ground they're defenseless you have to learn how to defend yourself while you're on the ground it was more of a strategic game it was more of a realistic fighting game you can get one slash in there and hit them at the heart and they die it was all more it was more like feudal japan sagoku period type japan like samurais and whatnot although there was an unlockable character like an army soldier lady that had a freaking gun that was cheap as hell but just imagine them improving that and taking more fighters from around the world it was mostly like japanese based but they had some european-esque characters with like rapiers and swords from like european type battlefields and whatnot a couple characters but it was mostly like taking like spears and samurai swords and putting feudal japan sengoku period japan characters just beating the crap out of each other it was fun i only ever played the original i never could find the second one but i found the first one and it was definitely a fun experience especially because those matches could be very strategic like you literally have to plan your attacks you could lose at any time i thought it was cool i think that's a cool concept and i definitely think that's what fighting games need now is not just like doing the same old status pool of health bars but doing something unique and at the time that was unique the only bad thing about it now is konami owns it and konami sucks <laughs> number four goes to another capcom franchise shocker rival schools why hasn't rival schools come back capcom why you freak it's so it's like one of your fighting game franchises that's so connected to street fighter you freaking have sakura showing up in there her friends sometimes show up in versus capcom games and get mentioned or referenced in street fighter people love the games you just brought in freaking akira into street fighter 5 bring back rival schools it was a fun series and i know a lot of gamers out there would agree with me on that. Rival Schools, Capcom, 
Listen to your fan base. Not everything about you fighting game wise is Street Fighter. I mentioned Power Stone. I mentioned Rival Schools. Remember your other fighting game franchises. We are finally in the top three. And this one is definitely one that has a lot of gamers loving it. They would love to see a real true third one because the third one absolutely sucked and the first two were so goddamn good def jam oh wait there was a third one def jam icons i've never heard of it must have been crap but def jam vendetta def jam fight for new york it was the aki engine if for those of you that don't know they made the likes of wrestlemania 2000 no mercy wcw versus nwo world tour wcw nwo revenge the virtual pro wrestling one and two games all the different wrestling games that you love uh from wcw wf back on the n64 they made those and when wcw went under and was bought by the wf wb they took that engine that was supposed to be the next wcw mayhem or so and turned it into vendetta wrestling game with rappers it was the first one, I like Vendetta, but I loved Fight for New York. And I would love to see a third game that actually continues that story with D-Mob and his crew and throwing modern-day rappers, bring back old-school rappers, and just take the Aki engine and make it even better and totally ignore that Def Jam icons on the 360 and PS3 ever happened. That trash can go in the trash because no one liked it. It was complete garbage. I would love to see Jeff Jam brought back. And I know a lot of you out there would too. Number two, the last Capcom franchise on this list. And I already mentioned Rival Schools. I already mentioned Power Stone. You should know what's coming next and it's Dark Stalkers. Why, Capcom, has there not been a new Dark Stalkers since I think the PS1, since the late 90s? Why? People loved it. It was it was an iconic game. It may have been a little more niche than freaking Street Fighter, but it had its own fan base. It had its own popularity. People loved the characters. And you still reference them all in Marvel vs. Capcom and Tatsunoko vs. Capcom and whatnot, all the crossovers and stuff. Your little card game thing with freaking Namco and all that on the DS and everything. Every little crossover references these characters. Why in the world have you brought it back? You've done collections and ports and like an HD remaster of like one of the older ones and all this different stuff everything other than making a new goddamn game and I know a lot of fighting gamers out there want a new Dark Suckers and while I definitely am not super nostalgic with it I've only played like one or two games in the series and I really just know the characters from the crossovers mostly I want to see it brought back because I would love to see it take a modern day approach like a Street Fighter 5 and all these modern day fighting games. Just imagine what you can do with all these monstrous characters. You could have Felicia, you could have, you know, Morgan, you could have freaking all these characters, Dimitri, all in this new game. Everyone. It would be so freaking cool just to see them in super HD model, high detailed character models. Why? Why don't you do it, Capcom? What's wrong with you? And before we get to number one, I have to go through some honorable mentions here because I had a bunch of fighting games I wanted to see. And some honorable mentions include Gundam Battle Assault, which um, was like PS1 fighting games. It was, it was like a 2D style PS1 fighting game where you played as different Gundams from out, throughout the different Gundam series. Like there was some Gundam Wing stuff, Mobile Suit Gundam. Seed, all these different Gundam series fused together with different characters. It was like it was kind of like a Street Fighter kind of style game. It was like a 2D fighting game. I played one of them religiously back then, even though I wasn't super big into Gundam. I still love Gundam. I've watched enough Gundam, but I'm not the biggest Gundam fan. Like a lot of you other you, you anime fans out there. But I would love to see it brought back. And uh, oh hey, Big Zam. You know it would be it would be cool to see them do something with Gundam. Especially because Gundam's still going. There's still new Gundam franchises like all the time. It's one of the biggest freaking anime franchises in Japan. Um, Fighting Vipers was a Sega fighting franchise. I've never played it, but I hear a lot of good things about it. Um, and I definitely think Sega should do more than just Virtual Fighter. Primal Rage is epic. Come on. 
You have giant dinosaurs and apes and everything fighting each other. You can even do a freaking crossover with Godzilla and King Kong and get the licensing to put them in as guest characters. It'd be kind of cool. PlayStation All-Stars. PlayStation needs to take another attempt at the Smash Brothers ripoff. They really do. They really didn't do that well with the first All-Stars, and I think they need to make it a little bit more like Smash Brothers because I think they tried to make it so much like Smash Brothers and so much not, and I think that took away from them, and then the roster wasn't all that great, and I think there's potential there, but PlayStation's going to... PlayStation, I guess. BioFreaks, definitely like a PlayStation 1 N64 fighting game. It was kind of like an arena fighter, 3D fighter, where all the characters were mutants and used gun weaponry and really crazy dark kind of thing, and I think a modern-day gaming scene could use something like that. Um, here's one more... Crap. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, one more Capcom franchise that barely missed the list, and that is Saturday Night Slam Masters. Capcom, you're four for four on this list, and one from Zenobu Mentions. Do more than just Street Fighter. God damn. Saturday Night Slam Masters was an epic game. I never played the second one. The second one was more of a fighting game. The first one was more like a fighting wrestling game. But the characters, Biff Slamkovich, freaking, you know, the Scorpion, all these characters, Gunlock, I would love to see them all brought back. If they can't be added to you know, Street Fighter, can we please just get the series back? I would like both. I'd like to see a new franchise back and then throw a couple of them in the Street Fighter Six or something, but I'll take what I can get and I want it back. It was definitely one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Killer Instinct, which is back. This is kind of a little bit of a thing. It was brought back recently on the Xbox One, and there are rumors that they're making a new one on Xbox Series SX. But they're still just rumors, and I think it should still be brought back because it's freaking Killer Instinct, and it's a beloved fighting game franchise that's been around since freaking forever. And just because it was originally on my list, and I dropped it down to putting Ready to Boxing, and it's technically still a sports game, can we get a new fight night, please? The last one was like 2011. Please? And without further ado, drum roll, please, for number one. And if you've seen my list before, I've mentioned this as a number one before, and I would love for it to come back because it is definitely a fighting game franchise that has its fan base, its beloved, and its missed. Bloody roar, please. The only bad thing about that is it's Konami. Damn you, Konami. You want all the good stuff. I want Bloody Roar back so bad. It was so good. It was such a good franchise. Bio-mechanically engineered, experimented on humans to become beast animal creatures, and you could make every other... Just imagine that concept now where they have more modern-day gaming technology, like on the Switch and the Xbox Series SX and the PlayStation 5. Modern-day. Because the last time we saw this franchise was during the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox days. And they only made it to like four. And the games on the PS1, which I played a little bit of, and they were cool, but I never really played the one on the GameCube a lot, Primal Fury or whatever the heck it's called. And it was an awesome, awesome game. Every character had like two movesets, their human form and their animal transformed form. It was such a good franchise, and god damn it, Konami is stupid. I would love to see it brought back. And you see everyone else mentioned wanting to bring it back too. There was even, I forgot the name of what it was. Back in the day, there was like this, like, this game that was being like worked on, it eventually got canceled. That was all these animal characters in a fighting game. I know, um, <sighs> Jesus Christ, Benny from Maximilian Dude was going to be like a character in it. And it was like on, it was being funded, and then they canceled it because probably not enough funding or not enough interest or something. I just want, I just want Bloody Roar back, please. Please. It was such a fun fighting game. It had good mechanics and everything, interesting characters. And I think modern day, if they do it right, with the technology and gaming now, it'd be awesome. And that's my list. So let's go down the list of what it is. Number 10 is Ready to Rumble Boxing. 9 is Flying Dragon. 8 is Fighter Maker. 7 is Fighter's Destiny. 6 is Power Stone. 5 is Bushido Blade. 4 is Rival Schools. 3 is Def Jam. 2 is Dark Stalkers. And 1 is Bloody Roar. I will never forgive Konami for how stupid they are. Not just that, but every one of their franchises. That's my list in visual form for all of you. I hope you guys like this list. Put in the comment section what fighting games you all want to see brought back. 
and we can discuss it down there, have some fun, because there's a lot that I didn't even mention here that I'm sure you would name, and I'd be like, wait, I forgot that franchise. Oh, crap. So that's it. That's my list. So like this one out. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. Have a lovely day. I'll see you all later in the next video. Bye, everyone.